feel welcome to just unmute and raise your hand um, and, and interrupt and ask questions. Um, this is really uh, your time to ask uh, Lumen for whatever questions that you guys have. All right. So uh, we kicked off a partnership with Desmos uh, October 1st of this year. We're super excited. Um, as you guys might already know, Desmos is a leader in having an online graphing tool that allows students to, and teachers to utilize this product um, with no cost associated for student and teacher users. And um, as partners, um, we're excited to build this integrated into our system um, so that it's a really seamless kind of um, easy to access tool that we're gonna use in a couple of different ways. Um, so, uh, and part of the reason why we started this partnership is I think one of the biggest gaps in math today is providing these beautiful, easy to use accessible graphs and graphing to students integrated right there with their learning and assessment content um, and making it easy for faculty to adopt stuff without actually having to create things completely from scratch and have all these Desmos URLs that they're organizing within their learning management system. So we're trying to create this really easy to use integrated experience. Um, so the couple of ways that we're going to start bringing Desmos into our platform, um, the first thing that we're working on that we'll be talking about at length today um, is the interactives. Um, so we'll get into that a little bit more. Um, we're also on the nearby horizon, we'll be bringing in the assessment calculator um, so that teachers will have control on which assessments have that calculator available and what kind of calculator you want in there. Is it a basic one? Is it a scientific one? Is it the Desmos graphing one? Um, and so we're pretty excited about that. Um, and then finally, the kind of big project on the horizon that we're really looking to our users and potential users to give us feedback on is how we want to extend our greater graphing question type. So we'll dive into these um, in, in greater detail here in a moment. Um, I'm going to actually begin just to try to level set and give folks a perspective on what Desmos graphing looks like today. Um, just so we kind of understand what, what we're actually bringing into our product home. All right, so creating Desmos graphs. Um, it sounds like everyone has a little bit of familiarity with Desmos already. And I wanted to warm up with an example of creating uh, like the basic of a slope intercept form of a line, um, not quite the interactive, but the graph that would sit inside of an interactive that's walking teachers and students through um, maybe a slope intercept form lesson on a line. So I'll begin by going to desmos.com and you'll be amazed at how easy it is. And this is part of why we um, even began this partnership. So kind of the simplest way that we can interact with Desmos is just by simply putting in equations that we want to graph. So for example, I could do a y equals 3x plus 5 and I could create almost, I mean you guys see in a second, a nice sketch of the graph y equals 3x plus 5. Now we could be a little bit fancier if we wanted to modify this again, imagining writing a lesson or an interactive around this learning, um, I, or this, this concept. Um, and so instead, what I could do is be more general and write parameters M and B. Um, Desmos' system is pretty simple and, e and easy to use. It's already detecting that, hey, uh, I don't know what M and B are. Maybe this user wants me to make these parameters as sliders. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sliders around these guys. Um, and you can see um, pretty easily, we get these nice drag and drop sliders that allow both the teacher and student users to interact with the parameter M, which is gonna be our slope, and the parameter B, which is going to be our um, y-intercept. Um, Desmos also has nice features around trying to um, uh, restrict the domain in which we're gonna be choosing these parameters and the steps in which we're gonna select these parameters. So now you can see that it's only allowing for integer valued um, parameters M and B. So this is kind of our most basic, easy, create a graph that has slope intercept form of a line. Um, so hopefully people aren't <laughs> too simple, um, but this is our most simple form. So another example that I wanted to look at is this point slope form with draggable points. And so the idea of Desmos, I think how you might interact with it is fairly simple, but even with these simple tools, we're able to construct some fairly complex, interesting examples um, where we can start to begin 
imagining how um, beginning with a set of graphs that are more robust that Lumen is constructed, you could start to create really interesting lesson plans or interactives of what you could do in class. So for example, in this case, we have uh, specified some points and uh, we also specified this point intercept form of the line or sorry, slope point, point slope form of the line. And um, we can see that uh, in this case, we get uh, interactive that's a little bit more robust than the one we started with. This initial one, the student would have to interact with the sliders and there's no way to interact directly on the graph easily. Um, and so in this case, uh, with a little bit more, you know, uh, elbow grease, we're able to construct a point, uh, sorry, a, a line that has movable points that help the student interact with the graph. Um, and so these are kind of the fundamental bits and pieces in which we're going to begin constructing our interactives inside at home. Um, so let's see. And please interrupt if you have any questions or comments or questions on, around functionality as well. Um, so we can take an even more challenging example. So, so far, I mean, we've looked at um, just typing in the equation directly with some parameterization. So you have the sliders. We've also seen an example where, you know, you put a little bit more elbow grease, you specify these movable points, and then you describe the parameters on the equation using these, referencing these movable points. And last but not least, we're gonna look at an example where um, inside of Desmos, we've constructed a parabola that's movable on the vertex and on the point. Um, so again, same kind of concept as that um, movable line, um, points, points on a line example. Um, but in this case, uh, I think the interesting bit, aside from just being able to interact with the parabola just by using these two points and dragging them, is if you look at the construction, um, you can see that there's our vertex. Great, we've parameterized it with sliders and specified it as a movable point. Um, and then there's a clever construction of let's um, so, uh, select the other point um, dependent on the initial h comma k. And we've rigged up the equations so that uh, it works out that as I drag and drop these points, my value for the leading coefficient the, the steepness of this curve is going to be tied to just specifying those two points. Um, and so, you know, pretty neat with some fairly rudimentary, I want to call it rudimentary, but it's pretty, pretty simple tooling inside of Desmos. We can construct fairly, um, like, just fairly great graphs to, for, to have students interact with them without having to actually interact with this equation panel. Um, it's also note, uh, nice to note that actually um, a lot of these um, uh, kind of um, setup and equations and points, we can all hide that within the folder when we bring it inside of OM as well. Um, and then just some other neat examples. Uh, since there haven't been too many interruptions, I don't know if anyone wants to see any of these things in particular. Uh, there's a ton of other um, uh, neat functionality. So things like having lists and being able to create um, scatter plot fits to those uh, points, um, making lists to do families of functions, and then um, dynamic piecewise defined functions as well. Um, so I will try to have these slides sent out with the, uh, with the recording today, and um, we will make sure that you guys can access this um, for reference later. All right, and then there's additional neat functionality that um, you know, we could definitely loop back around at the end of our webinar today uh, in case people are interested in talking through it. Um, Desmos in particular just released last summer a really excellent um, suite of statistical functions, um, including things like uh, normal PDFs, uh, T distribution, and I think exponential distribution, as well as doing things like inverse CDF. So in a lot of ways, we can start to imagine replacing some of the things that we do with Excel that's clunky in the classroom or TI-83 that's clunky in the classroom with these well-curated interactives that Lumen will be constructing and um, adding at no cost um, to our um, template courses. All right, so I'll pause there. Does anyone have any specific questions around Desmos and Desmos functionality? I'll take the silence as a no, but again, hopefully people feel free to interrupt. 
All right, so how are we gonna bring this pretty awesome tool and have it be inside of OM in a way that teachers can easily find and students can actually get access to? So the first way that we're gonna be doing this is with our awesome interactive. So these graphing activities will help students and faculty um, go through math concepts. Um, and I'm a, we're really imagining these things to be either self-guided, like students can access them right there in the course, and walk through um, instructional content, wrapping um, these in interactive graphs, or faculty could pull up the interactive in a lecture or in an online um, recording and actually talk through those concepts. Um, so this feature release, um, so the functionality um, to be available inside of OM will come out around uh, the beginning of March 2020. And at the same time, we'll be releasing a full suite of over 30 interactives for our college algebra with co-requisite support course and college algebra course. Um, so yeah, so some timing, whoops, the typo on the date. Um, so yeah, that was March 2020, the beginning of March 2020, end of Feb 2020, college algebra with co-requisite support. We're approximating more than 30 interactives for that. Another set of interactives in um, late spring for intermediate algebra, and then another set of interactives for um, summer 2020 for intro to statistics. Um, so this is going to be curated suites by Lumen that any teacher could go in and say, hey, I like these interactives. I'm going to grab them and um, either use them as is, or I could, if I want to, um, modify any of the content in there, either the the, co the copy in there, I can add links to stuff, I could modify the Desmos graph if I wanted to and have that saved. Um, so this is just a great package for faculty to grab and modify if they feel the need to. Um, so here's what it looks like. Um, so this is a, from the student's perspective. Uh, this is a lesson on, oops, am Aaron, am I still sharing? Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Um, this is the view that the students might have when they click on from their course, the Transformations Desmos Interactive. Um, and the students, you can see we have these little um, kind of fast navigation to get around. And the students will also be able to click on each one of these um, uh, steps in order to get to the next, um, uh, the, the next part of the interactive. So these are not just simply just a single Desmos graph. These are gonna be exposition that's wrapping possibly two, three, four different Desmos graphs that are building on the same concept or activity to try to drive home um, kind of the key points in that particular um, uh, lesson objective. Um, and on the teacher side, you'd be able to actually modify this. So let's say you don't like how vertical and horizontal shifts are clumped together in this particular example, you'd be able to easily modify the naming on this, add a new, uh, add a new page, and uh, modify all of the content in here, all the way down to the actual Desmos graph and have that saved for your particular course. Um, so I'll pause and ask if there are any questions around here. And um, since I can't see anyone's responses at all, um, it'd be great to know, um, just of the teachers here in the room, you could just unmute yourself and let me know, do you guys anticipate using something like this in the classroom? And are there any other courses that you guys would be interested in having Desmos Interactives for? Um, and I think I even remember people's names. I'm gonna pick on, um, oh my gosh, I don't remember everyone's names off the top of my head. Erin, can you give me a teacher name? Ah, maybe, maybe Jeanette or Dan. Lisa. It's like Lisa. Lisa. Yeah, let's pick on Lisa. Oh, I'm actually not um, a math teacher. I'm an instructional technologist. Right. Um, do yeah. you imagine bringing in this kind of content for, um, for your faculty? Do you imagine them being interested or excited? Yeah, but they would also want to be able to have the video side by side. Is there any way you could have that available? Uh, so currently in our uh, little editor over here, there is a way to embed video. So that should not be actually problematic. I think. Okay. Okay. Could, could, um, this is Carol from Colorado. All right. Could, hi, you, 
could you also do it for calc? Because there seems to be an awful lot of resources maybe for college algebra and stats, but not a lot for the upper level calc. Because I would love to have this with um, calc or even survey of calc. Yep. Maybe the 120 um, math for liberal arts, those are very common courses <coughs> that a lot of people take as well. Okay, awesome. Um, so I'm going to look at Erin who has the ability. Can you write those two ones down? Um, Carol, you must be looking at my secret list. Uh, Calc has definitely been on our minds um, as one that is potentially sequenced after stats. Um, and part of it is um, availability of having subject matter experts that are interested in contributing this kind of work. So if, if, if you know anyone that's interested in, in possibly contributing work and, and working together with Lumen um, as either a subject matter expert um, or uh, just partnering with us. Uh, yeah, we are very open to um, yeah, suggestions on what content is missing and how we could improve that. Great Math for Liberal Arts is also a, a common course that's bubbling up now with um, okay. Math Pathways being implemented through the Dana Center. So people are getting filtered into either a stats course if needed or a Math for Liberal Arts. So we're seeing a lot more growth in the Math for Liberal Arts realm as well within Colorado. Okay. Totally makes sense to me too. All right, and I feel like there was a Deborah, but I don't think Deborah's mic was hooked up. Has anyone um, asked? Seen any chat or any any activity from Deborah? Deborah, if you are able to talk, your mic mic is available. All right. I think sometimes faculty end up joining from their office, which might not have a mic on their computer. So hopefully, um, we'll be able to follow up. Um, if you have any um, questions or feedback, um, offline. All right. Great. Good to know. Um, oops. So I was going to walk through a little bit more in a little bit more gory detail, but I think we have the, um, the gist of hopefully this. And if we want to go back through some of the additional comps that we have around Desmos um, interactives, we definitely can do that towards the end. All right. So the other thing that we're going to tackle um, in the coming year uh, is the in assignment calculator. So this is the Desmos and Assignment Calculator to help students complete the homework just wherever they are. Um, the nice thing with our integration with Desmos is this is gonna work beautifully via mobile. So I imagine students being at like Starbucks on a quick break and um, being able to pull up their own homework and not having to worry about having their backpack with them and their calculator with them. They'd be able to, um, if this faculty specifies for that particular homework, that um, it, the calculator is allowed, they'd be able to access that calculator right then and there, um, making it just a lot easier for students to get um, their work done in those small snippets of time that they may have if they're working students. Um, this will be released by fall 2020. Um, and so uh, if enabled, we're imagining that the calculator would go right here uh, along the, with the other question help um, that might be provided for that particular question. And when they click on it, Boom, right there um, inside of the assessment without navigating to a different website, we have our Desmos calculator. Um, and again, the teacher will have the, um, the ability to specify, hey, is this gonna be the four function calculator? Maybe I'm teaching a simple class where I don't really want them to have a ton of algebra. Um, is this going to be actually maybe a more robust calculator like the Desmos graphing calculator? So faculty will have that ability to control because um, we know that um, yeah, being able to specify all these things is really critical to, to making sure that the students have the right level of resource available. Um, and I'll pause here too. Are there any questions around the calculator? And I'll pick on the uh, instructional <coughs> technologist and the faculty member. Um, do you guys have any questions or comments um, about whether you guys think it's usable or not? Well, I think it is usable, but I'm concerned about the testing functionality um, if students are going to be able to use it and how it's going to interact with um, some of the other test proctoring software. Like I've been researching test proctoring software and a lot of those um, platforms have um, a calculator already available. So I'm wondering if you guys should really look at um, if your software is going to conflict with some of theirs, like ProctorU, for example. Yeah, 
That's a good point. So a PSI. Believe, mm -hmm. um, so for one, uh, faculty will always be able to turn that calculator off if they want to, let's say on the proctored exam, use the proctoring software tools. Um, more ideally, like I, uh, the, one of the restrictions that we have for our engineering team today is that um, the, basically the way the graphing calculator works, it's not going to be a desmos.com URL. It will be an ohm.luminlearning.com URL. And so in theory, for at least I'm fairly confident with ProctorU and I know for HonorLock as well, um, the way that we're integrating the Desmos into our system should not be um, technically blocking um, using proctoring software like ProctorU or HonorLock. Um, it's a great point, though, to bring up right now. I mean, yeah, you may want to um, test it by having instructors like turn off the calculator and the test proctoring software and then turn the Lumen Ohm software on. Right. That would probably be the easiest, right. I'm thinking, from experience. Yep, yep. And that's an exceptionally great point to make. Um, I think uh, one of the things that we strive to do here is um, work with faculty as we're designing this stuff um, so that we can surface these kinds of concerns and try to get ahead of it before we actually release it to the whole world um, you know working with partners and faculty members to make sure that we're getting all of these um, requirements in up front so really appreciate that feedback for sure um, i think the other thing that's worth noting um, for the testing scenario desmos does offer a third-party app on their phone, on an iPhone and other smartphones. Um, it's pretty interesting to look at. Um, so that's that's another thing that um, one, one might consider. I know a lot of folks are nervous about having students access their phone during a test, um, but the Desmos app will actually lock the student out from accessing any other app on the phone while it's activated. So th there's another a thing lot of things on the horizon. I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Another thing I thought of too is um, instructors always want to know how students got the answer because there's programs that students can use that will just pop out the right answer. Um, so it would be nice if your calculator would be set up so that the instructor could see all of the quote student work, all of the calculations a student did to get at the right answer. Awesome feedback. I I think we've actually had a similar discussion around how much of that work we should save for faculty member to, re to review um, after the test has been done. For sure, awesome. Any other comments or feedback? All right, so I'm gonna move on. Um, the last thing I would say like the, the most exciting and also the most, uh, I'd say, um, murkiest and open to discussion a feature that we have way out on the horizon with no committed date yet is this greater graphing questions. So today in our system, we have a fully accessible graphing tool that's got lines, parabolas, absolute values, so tons and tons of stuff. Um, but we're still missing some um, types of graphing that faculty have been asking about. So things like more complicated logarithmic ex, uh, transformations or um, the, I don't want to say, logistic growth curve, um, more complicated transformations on exponentials. So um, we're excited to explore how we can leverage our uh, existing uh, partnership with Desmos to um, either replace or augment our existing graded graphing question type. Um, and we're really looking to faculty to tell us, hey, these are the graphing type questions that we really want to have but we haven't been able to get into the system today. Um, and I'm looking at, the, at those teachers that are doing particularly calculus, pre-calculus, and college algebra. I know those are the three courses where um, having some of these, even though it's a fairly expansive library of question uh, graphing types, um, there have been some gaps where folks are still doing hand-graded, paper-graded homework. Now, I don't think that there's gonna be a way to um, do everything under the sun, um, but we certainly want to um, get to a point where folks are able to ask all those questions that they want um, to have a computer grade system to be able to answer. 
So um, we don't have any comps for this guy, um, but I, while we're on the topic, I would love to hear from folks on what those graded question or gra sorry, what those graphing types might be. Well, in addition to like advanced questions, um, cheating is also going to come up. So um, if instructors could at least change the numbers in these questions, that would be fantastic. You know, if they could put just changing the numbers of these would really deter cheating because the students would have to figure out the answers in order to um, answer the question right. So thankfully, we already have that in our system that the numbers okay. are algorithmic. So even if it's, um, let's say, a simple line question in our system today, the teacher could, uh, so the question coder can specify, hey, I want the slope to be between negative five and five and integer valued. Um, and the B has to be, you know, a different integer or a different integer. So we currently support that in our system today, thankfully. So cheating. Um, is mitigated with randomization. We love that. Now, what about um, feedback for the students? So if the instructor changes the numbers, like for a parabola question, mm -hmm. um, is the answer key also changed? Like the answers yes. would reflect the, answers, the actual yes. numbers. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yep, exactly. Yep. With some sort of explanation that could be modified because so that's one not, thing in Blackboard yeah. that instructors have to type out an explanation and they don't right. like that. So if yeah. you could have some sort of explanation. And another thing that I thought of too was um, accessibility, especially with the charts and graphs. How are you guys going to give like a description of that? So uh, this is another reason, and I, I, I realize I failed to call it out up front. Um, one of the reasons why we're partnering with Desmos is they have done an exceptional job like we do a great job with accessibility um, oh it's yeah definitely always front of mind for us desmos because they these guys it's a team of people focused only on crafting um they have they meet wcag wcag 2.0 aa accessibility standards they have a blind developer as one of their lead developers on their team um so although i can't speak to all of the my, uh, the d details about how they manage accessibility with um, graphs and tables. Um, I can say that we're really excited um, to actually be able to enhance our accessibility by partnering with these guys. Um, so the graded graphing question type will have even improved accessibility as we extend using Desmos. Oh, that's good. Because I was concerned because you're supposed to describe it as a picture. Whenever I um, do PowerPoints and I have a graph or something, I describe it as a picture. So I'm like, oh, but that's good. They have a blind developer on staff. And the um, AA standard is what's been held up in the courts recently. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> right. Excellent. Um, any other questions or comments around the greater graphing questions? Particularly, are there graphing questions that you've been dreaming about asking that we haven't been able to ask in the current system as it is today? I have, I have a question. I don't know if it's related to this or not, but sure. um, our, our college cannot afford the proctoring software that a lot of other institutions do. So we still do paper tests because of the yep. cheating aspect. So uh, is there, uh, is there, are there people keeping in mind that oftentimes we take the assessments, we create them in your system, and then we print them, and how that comes across as a Word document and the formatting that is, um, that is done there as you download it as a print, print file? Uh, yes. Um, so I don't, I, have you guys, you guys have already been using that functionality, is that right? Yes, yeah, so we've been doing that for our tests, but the, we have to go back through and do some substantial formatting because the formatting is a little wonky. So right. there is some substantial formatting that needs to occur before we can actually distribute that to exam, or that exam to a, a student. I just wondered if that was being kept on people's radar. Um, 
it is not uh, something that we've been actively working on, um, partly because we actually haven't heard a ton of feedback around that. So mm -hmm. if you don't mind shooting me a mail after this, let's get that into our feature request um, okay. log. And we can't do every feature request under the sun, but That's we certainly love to hear about it. Um, honestly, I would take any complimentary email that I get mm -hmm. <laughs> and I would trade it for a hundred, um, yeah, complaints about things that faculty want to do. Um, so I hope that you feel really welcome. And we're, uh, um, I would say it's like, we're still a small team and we're excited to actually be small enough to actually interact with our users fairly directly. Um, so if you guys are having any of those kinds of, um, yeah, pain like this, where there's a particular task that's very annoying and you do it every semester or every term, um, please reach out and complain. <laughs> Let us know. Um, so if you uh, want to just reach out directly, um, I have, I think on here, I don't have it on here. Um, so my email address is really easy to remember. It's just Deborah, D-E-B-O-R-A-H, Deborah at lumenlearning.com. Um, and any of those feature requests or questions that you have around um, how we can improve the product, you should feel totally free reaching out to me. Um, and if you can't remember my name, you can always reach out to support at lumenlearning.com and those requests will be routed directly to me. Um, but for sure, um, I think there's, a, there's, there's always opportunities for improving um, existing functionality like the paper test. Thank you. Of course. All right. So are there any general questions or comments? Um, anything that we wanna loop back on as a group? Are you guys going to have a follow-up um, once you start releasing these features? Absolutely. So uh, we uh, haven't made the final details or dates around um, what our launch um, demo will look like, um, but I'm anticipating sometime in late February, early March, we'll have another one of these webinars where we're actually going into the product and um, modifying and reviewing um, the interactive suite. Okay, that sounds great. Awesome. Um, out of curiosity, do you think uh, you'll be modifying any of these interactives or offering a new one from scratch? Um, I think our faculty will. They're very interested in it, but they just haven't had time to really look at it. They just heard about Lumen Ohm a couple weeks ago. Ah, exciting. Well, you should, anyone that's interested in a deeper dive demo, Dan and Paul are our experts on the team that are, uh, they, they give a, a mean demo. <laughs> It'll be a good one. So um, please don't hesitate to reach out um, if, if it would be helpful to have someone on our team um, meet with some faculty and get them, get them rolling. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Of course. Anything else, you guys? All right, well, um, I see a couple things in chat. Ah, so Carol was making a recommendation to look at ProctorTrack or Proctorio um, as they're pretty reasonably priced at four to, four to 10 bucks a test. Um, so great pro tip. Love it when we can share information uh, on a call. Well, um, I just wanna say thanks again for uh, Lisa and Carol for joining us today. Um, and uh, we look forward to Seeing you guys again, hopefully, um, at the launch webinar and early next year. Uh, if any questions come up at all, please feel free or please don't uh, hesitate to reach out to us at uh, support at lumenlearning.com or just to me directly at deborah at lumenlearning.com. All right, thanks everybody.